Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about maximum likelihood estimation in machine learning. Assume that we are given some observed data. Maximum likelihood estimation or MLE is a method of estimating the parameters of an assumed probability distribution for the given observed data. This is achieved by maximizing the likelihood function so that under the assumed probability distribution or statistical model, the observed data is most probable. The point in the parameter space that maximizes the likelihood function is called as the maximum likelihood estimate. The goal of the maximum likelihood principle is to fit an optimal statistical distribution to some data. This makes the data easier to work with, which makes it more general allows us to see if the new data follows the same distribution as the previous data and also allows us to classify the unlabeled data points. Now let us imagine a binary classification problem between male and female individuals using height. Once we have calculated the probability distribution of men and women heights and we get a new point as height with no label, we can assign it to the most likely class seeing which distribution reports the highest probability of the two. For example, consider this image. So we have blue line which is for male distribution and red line for female distribution. So now assume that we have new unlabeled data point that is x new. So here x axis is height in centimeter, y axis is class probability. So in this image, the new data point which corresponds to a height of 172 centimeter. So 172 centimeter means here it is classified as female because for the specific height value, the female height distribution yields a higher probability. So if you see here, the female distribution yields a higher probability than the male one. So we decide that this new data point belongs to the female distribution. We know that the goal of MLE is to fit the optimal probability distribution to some data. Now let us see how to calculate the distributions or estimate the parametric density function. Let us denote our data vector of size n as x. In this vector, each of the rows is a data point with d features. Now we have our data. Once we have collected the data, we need to guess the kind of probability density function or distribution which we think our data follows. There are many types of distributions like Gaussian, Exponential, Poisson, etc. We can use any of this. In our case, we are considering the Gaussian or normal distribution. Let's call the overall set of parameters for the distribution as theta. So in the case of normal distribution or Gaussian distribution, the parameters are mean and the variance. Now we need to obtain the parameter set theta that maximizes the joint density function of the data vector that is the likelihood function which is mentioned as L of theta. The likelihood function can also be expressed as P of x given theta which is written as L of theta is equal to P of x given theta is equal to p of x of 1 to x of n given theta. Here x is the data matrix x of 1 up to x of n or each of the data points in the data matrix x and theta is the given parameter set for the distribution. The goal of the maximum likelihood principle is to choose the parameter values that is theta so that the observed data is as likely as possible. To obtain this optimal parameter set, let us take the derivatives with respect to theta in this likelihood function which is expressed here. If the data points of this x is independent of each other, then the likelihood function can be expressed as the product of the individual probabilities for each data point as given here. So we can express this likelihood function as L of theta is equal to P of x given theta is equal to product of p of xj given theta. So here xj is nothing but x of 1 to x of n. Now let us see about the maximum likelihood principle using normal distribution. For normal or Gaussian distribution, the parameters are the mean and the variance. The density function for the normal distribution or Gaussian distribution can be expressed as 
f of x given mu comma sigma square which is equal to 1 by root of 2 pi sigma square into e power minus of x minus mu whole square divided by 2 sigma square. Here x is the input data, mu comma sigma square are the parameters which is represented as theta and mu is the mean, sigma square is the variance. Now let us consider the likelihood function for first data point in a data set. So the equation can be modified as p of x of 1. So here instead of x we have x of 1 and the parameters are mu comma sigma square and the formula is same except instead of x here we are mentioning it as x of 1 since we are considering the first data point. So this is the equation for the first data point. If we consider the end data points that is old data set then the equation will be like this. So instead of x of 1 we have x here and this root of 2 pi sigma square can be expressed as 2 pi sigma square whole power 1 by 2. So instead of square root we can express it as exponentiation of 1 by 2. So since here we are considering n data set it is expressed as 2 pi sigma square whole power n by 2. And here instead of x of 1 we have x of i and we have summation here since we are considering the n data points. So this is the equation for old data set. Now let us express this probability distribution equation for old data set in a logarithmic way as shown here. So if we apply logarithm for this first term in the equation we get minus n by 2 into ln of 2 pi sigma square. This is because 1 by log x can be expressed as minus log x. So we have minus here. In turn we can express log of x power n as n log x. So we have 2 pi sigma square whole power n by 2. So we can express it as n by 2 into ln of 2 pi sigma square. And if we consider this part log of e power x can be expressed as just x. So here we have the form e power minus x. So we take this term as it is. So minus 1 by 2 pi sigma square into summation of x of j minus mu whole square. Now after taking the logarithm, we set the derivative for this likelihood function with regards to mean to 0. So first let us take the derivative for this equation as shown here. Here first term is not depending upon the mu because we don't have mu term at all here. We have only sigma square. So the derivative with respect to mu is set to 0 for this term. So we are considering only the second term. So we are applying the derivative for the second term alone. Now for expanding the sum let us take the derivative inside the summation as mentioned here. After this let us differentiate inside the sum. After differentiation, we get 2 into x of j minus mu into minus 1. So if you apply differentiation for x of j minus mu whole square, we can write it as 2 into x of j minus mu. And in terms of mu, we can write it as minus 1. So we can further simplify this equation by cancelling 2 and 2 here and minus and minus also gets cancelled. So we can write the equation as 1 by sigma square into summation of x of j minus mu. So let us set this derivative to 0 as shown here. After setting it to 0, let us multiply both sides by sigma square. So if we multiply both sides by sigma square, this becomes 1 and this becomes 0. So we have summation of x of j minus mu is equal to 0. So let us distribute the summation for both of these terms. So we can write it as summation of x of j minus summation of mu is equal to 0. Since mu is constant with respect to j, we can simplify further as summation of x of j minus n mu is equal to 0. Now we have to find the mu, so we can write the equation as mu is equal to mu ml is equal to 1 by n into summation of x of j. So here ml indicates maximum likelihood. Now we have estimated the mean. We can do the same for other relevant parameter that is variance. But once we have the mean, it is easy to calculate the variance because variance is nothing but the sum of square difference between the observed data and the mean. So we can write the variance equation as variance for maximum likelihood is equal to 1 by n into summation of x of j minus mu ml whole square. So this is the equation for variance. Now we know the estimates for the parameters mean and variance of the Gaussian distribution using maximum likelihood. 
Let us apply this concept with an example. So we have a data set of male heights in a certain area and we want to find an optimal distribution to it using maximum likelihood. So imagine our data vector x in our case is the following. So we have 10 data points here. So the mean for this data points is 174.5 which we get by applying this data set with the formula given here. And let us find the variance by using this equation. So we have 30.45 for variance and standard deviation is nothing but the square root of the variance which is nothing but 5.5 centimeter. Now for any new data 177, let us check whether it is fitting to the following distribution or not. So we have 177 here. So let us substitute this 177 in this equation of Gaussian distribution. So for x we have 177 that is new data and mu and sigma square mu is the mean. For mean we have 174.5 and variance we have 30.45. So if we calculate by substituting these values in the equation, we get 0 0.0652 as the distribution value. Here is the normal distribution curve for the given data set of male heights with a mean of 174.5 cm and variance of 30.45. So this blue line is the normal distribution curve for this particular mean and variance. Now let us see whether this new value 177 is fitting to this distribution or not. So we have 177 here which is represented in the red line. So it is it fits to the distribution. So the y axis is 0 0.065 as we found. So thus this new value is fitting to this distribution. So this is the concept of maximum likelihood estimation. So the goal of MLE is to check whether the new value is fitting to the existing distribution or not. So thus we have seen about maximum likelihood estimation in this lecture. Thank you.